All right, it's early and today I'm heading to Alta again, the ski resort to look at the feeders and see if I can find some gray crowned rosy finches, maybe some black rosy finches. I'm joining my friend Dan, who you've seen on the channel before, and Eddie, who are great birders and they're coming down from Logan to meet me here. So very excited about this. And then later we're gonna head to the Salt Lake Cemetery to hopefully find that gilded flicker and we're gonna meet up with a new friend of the channel. I'm excited about today, let's see what we can find. When we arrived at the feeders in Alta, we were met with massive flocks of gray crowned rosy finches and much better lighting than the last time I was here in the blizzard. Gray crowned rosy finches can be identified through their brown body, pink highlights, gray crown, and the black on their forehead. They nest in the highest parts of the highest mountains in North America. Gray crowned rosy finches are almost fearless of humans as they don't really interact with them on a regular basis. They may hold the record for the highest altitude breeding in North America as it nests on Denali, the continent's highest peak. You can find them near the snow line during the summer and during the winter they drop to lower elevations to visit feeders. This makes ski resorts that have feeders a prime spot to see this bird. Because these birds hang out in such high elevation, a lot of mystery surrounds them. Population trends are generally unknown, however climate change could be negatively impacting the population. Another bird that was present in the trees and near the feeder was pine siskins. I was excited to see this bird and get it on camera as usually I don't see them too often. Although I've been told that they are everywhere where I live. And lastly, I got my camera lifer, Clark's Nutcracker. I was most excited about seeing this bird as it is another high elevation bird. It was absolutely stunning and was a perfect beginning to an even more exciting adventure later that day. I turned away from the feeders catching a glimpse of the skiers heading down the slopes and we headed to the cemetery to look for the gilded flicker. Just a quick stop at Salt Lake International Center. It's right near the airport. There's a lot of hotels here um, and there's some ponds and I got my best shots of a greater white fronted goose. I got that at the end of the year last year but it's good to get these better shots of it. Um, the last one took me by surprise because I didn't see it until late into editing a video. Um, and it was like very blurry way out in the distance. This one's a lot better, just chilling with a whole bunch of Canada geese. So super happy to get that greater white fronted goose for the year. Um, and now let's head over to the cemetery to see if we can find that gilded flicker. I'm looking for the gilded flicker again, round two. I'm here with my friend Hawken right here. He has a channel called hawk in the lens check it out he just started it a few weeks ago but he's been on youtube for a while he has another channel called hawk and sager it's more camping and exploration vlogs car camping stuff like that go check it out super good stuff that he's putting out there and i'll link both of those in the description but no sign of the gilded flicker so far but we'll see if we can find it no gilded flicker yet of course but I got a camera lifer, a brown creeper up in a, you know, climbing up a tree like it always does, right? So that's super cool. Really happy about that one. That is a um, first, not for Utah. And so it's not a lifer, but to get it on camera, that's so cool. So we're seeing stuff. We're not necessarily getting the flicker, but that's kind of how birding goes sometimes. Every northern flicker that we saw got us excited. Finding the gilded flicker was going to be like finding a needle in a haystack. As we walked around, we were repeatedly disappointed seeing our common red-shafted northern flickers fly by. We did see a beautiful red-tailed hawk in a tree, however. Then suddenly, something caught Hawken's eye. A flash of yellow. A spark of hope. Our initial shots of this bird were tough, as it was backlit by the sun. We were looking for a few things. Gilded flickers have bright yellow wings underneath, as well as a bright yellow undertail. This bird was also a female meaning that it had no red mustache on its face. It also needed to have its brown rust color covering the top of its head. Despite our backlit looks, this bird bared no negative field marks so our hope rose. We got better angles and my heart started to beat. This has got to be it, I thought. Then a flash of yellow tail, combined with the rust on the top of its head, had me convinced. The bird took off and I failed to capture that on camera, but with Hawkins' second camera trained on the bird, he captured this beautiful slow motion shot. We got more footage of the bird in another tree as the bird seemed to pose for us in the sunlight. How was this possible? 
Gilded flickers typically do not come further north than central Arizona. My guess is that gilded flickers do come further north more often than we think, but are missed because they are passed off as yellow-shafted northern flickers. If accepted by the state, it will be one of the furthest north gilded flickers ever recorded. Only one other accepted record of a gilded flicker exists in the state of Utah, and that one was seen in 2012 in the southernmost part of the state. It was an amazing experience tracking this bird down, and definitely one that I will never forget. All right, so we just got the gilded flicker on camera. Absolutely amazing bird. Hawken spotted it, and we sat there with bad lighting for a while, but we finally got it. What do you think of the bird? What do you think of your first rare, super rare bird experience? Yeah, that was super fun. Invigorating when you actually find it. Frustrating for the parts that we didn't, but incredible once we found it. Absolutely. And Hawken has some great footage of the bird on his channel, so remember, go subscribe, go like, go check it out. Um, I'll probably include some of his clips in this video. In fact, you've probably already seen them. So thank you, Hawken, for joining me today. You'll probably see more videos with us in the future together. So let's get it. All right, so found the gilded flicker. It's a difficult thing to identify as there are red shafted northern flickers with red wings and there's yellow shafted northern flickers with yellow wings. Now the gilded flicker has those bright yellow under wings and under tail. The one thing that also sets it apart is that rust on the top and back of its head. And then also its crescent moon on its chest. There's a slight difference there as well. So I wanna give a big shout out to Quinn. He's the person that found it here in the state of Utah originally a few weeks ago. I don't know if it's been officially accepted by the state yet, but it should be soon as there are plenty of photos out there showing that this is indeed a gilded flicker and it's been hanging out in the same cemetery for a few weeks. So super happy about this bird probably the rarest bird I've ever seen um, in my birding career or whatever. So still haven't found a super rare bird by myself, but it's fun to chase these rarities that other people run into. Let me know in the comments below, what's the most out of range bird you've ever found in your travels? Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I hope to see you all next time on Bright Eyed Birding.